So yes, Friday Flight School. So we're going to do another installment. And um, because of the audio issues and stuff, I hadn't had as much of a one to plan this out as I did the other two. However, um, on this one, I do feel like we should talk about something important that a lot of people overlook, especially early on, and that is ship systems. Do I have a list of all the size 1 weapons in the game? Not readily available, but I could easily get one. I, I have someone... I, I have a list of all the different weapons and their sizes bookmarked somewhere. It's just... Not something I can pull up while streaming, for example, quickly. Because that means alt-tabbing, having to go to the list, check through, find it, and so... I, I can always dig it back up, but... I hate when Star Citizen decides to load on the wrong monitor. But yes, on, on this one I, I think that we are going to be talking about ship systems. By that, that's the things that you can manipulate at this point. Um, each one of those can increase your survivability. It's really easy to do if you have voice attack. You can actually pre-program it to do stuff. Uh, that's why I like voice attack, because there's a lot of things that... Binding them to controls uh, with the limited number that you might have on a joystick, or even with a keyboard. Uh, the keyboard is a little bit easier because they're built into that, but that that's why I use voice attack. Actually, I will bring that up. So, in this one, you're going to get to hear my voice attack profile, Ella. She's a little bit creepy, so this is going to be a slightly more interesting flight school with her running in the background. But, well, that's my voice attack AI for you. Ella. What? I am busy. There was this perfectly fresh body just left floating in space, and I am busy eating. What do you mean, eating? I traded with the Vanduul, the F Great Organic Reclamation Attachments for ships. Ella, what is wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. Just because I am homicidal does not mean I do not have feelings. Uh, Ella, why do you have to be so creepy? I don't have to be. It just titillates me. That's what I'm talking about. Damn it, Ella. You're the one who is damned. Yeah, thanks. So yes, that's that's my lovely, lovely voice attack assistant, Ella. <clears throat> She's, um, interesting, to say the least. Uh, ten ton. I'm gonna start off in solo mode because I'm I'm gonna be going over ship systems. So a lot of it's gonna be me sitting still and going over things. So I, I'm gonna be going into free flight and solo for that. So we're gonna pick a ship with four quadrants. Uh, let's go with my F7CM. Now, it doesn't have the nose gun, but that doesn't really matter for this because it's an example. Just wanted to make sure it had other weapons. Okay. Oh, it isn't? Okay, thank you for letting me know. I have to get my joystick view up and running for all of you guys. Uh, Let me close it down and bring it back. So we've got... Go back into my devices. There we go. Okay. That's weird. My device list came up empty for a bit. I don't know why. Game controller settings, properties. Drag that over here. No joystick. Joystick. 
should show up. There it is. The lovely joystick. You'll see Deepbot over it for just a moment as I bring up everything over on that window and set it up properly. Okay. So now you should be seeing my joystick over there. So, yes, again for this flight school. Now, you might not see a lot of action with the joystick. Um, you might hear me do call-outs, but I'm going to explain them beforehand. So, we're going to do just free flight. And this is actually a really good way to set up a voice attack ahead of time. Now, voice attack, really, all it does is it macros pre-programmed keys. So you don't even have to have a call response like I've done. I just did it partially because, well, it creeps out chat and it's amusing. And also because if you do have a callback response from your voice attack, you know that the command went through. So even like a, a droid beep or anything that you want to program yourself, uh, you can use your default Windows voice, anything like that. So I'm just going to go drone sim so I can show you all these different ship systems that I was talking about. And the reason I'm using my Super Hornet is it's got the four shield quadrants and everything else. I'm most used to it. Um, so I can show you all of these bits and bobs. And the reason I'm showing you that these is it's still a part of basic flight control. Things that you can manipulate rather quickly at the start. Uh, it's easier with a mouse. I, I use joystick. But you can still get to the keyboard and change things around. And you can change them situationally to help you survive, to help you kill more, depending on what you're using. Um, to help you race better. Because each of these parts is going to come in handy right now. And as the game progresses, it's actually going to help you out in the Persistent Universe and in the long run. Getting used to manipulating these systems is something that's going to help you out a lot in the Persistent Universe when you get more and more advanced flight computers, and the developers have talked about this. The more advanced flight computers are going to let you... Thank you for interrupting me, game. The more advanced computer systems are going to allow you to get into even more detailed areas in some of the ships in order, order to manipulate the systems. Um, for example, the Rio seat, the, the second seat of the Super Hornet, the person sitting back there is going to be able to manipulate a lot of the ship systems on the fly. So, what you have here, and I'm going to make sure that the HUD shows up all nice and pretty, so I'm going to get into a dark area. Okay. We're going to start off with the basic power systems that are right on the front screen. Now, over in that direction there, you'll see G1, G2, and G3 above the M4A, the M4A, the Badger repeaters, the Talon, that entire left bar. That entire left bar on the screen, that, that's all the important information for what's going on with your ship. The first one, F1, that's your overview. So that gives you the basic information and everything else. F2 brings up your weapons. So you can see all of your weapons information. 100% uh, on the four guns that I have there. And then the FF are with the number 8. Those are my missiles. F3... Whoops, I hit F4 on accident. F3, this brings up your power management of all of the different systems on your ship. So you have your allocations of power to the different regions. You have all of your different items on the ship, your shields, your engines, your weapon, your turret, so on. And then F4 is your shields and their exact locations um, as well as the segment status that's why I chose a four shield ship so you can see that there's front back left right and that little grayed out bar T and B that's actually going to be for bigger ships that's top and bottom shields so you might actually get six quadrant shields or more complex on some of the bigger ships overlapping shields and everything else and berserker 01 thank you for the host sir 
Uh, ten ton. Yes, I am going to do an episode eventually to go over the mechanics of racing. However, I want to get down the basic mechanics of a ship, which were evasive flight, shooting, and, you know, the basic ship systems and everything else, before I get into something slightly more complex like racing. Now, it's, it's a basic thing to learn, but you want to get the basic basics of free flight down before you even get into mechanics of racing where you want to do things like throttle back and all that stuff um so i want to do this first because racing requires you to talk about com combining boost with throttle reduction com stab uh coupled versus decoupled if you want to try a decoupled turn when to do a decoupled turn, when not to do a decoupled turn, when to just use your throttle. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, so it's a little bit more complex. Hello, Papa. And Jacob. I'm doing Friday Flight School, guys, so if I don't respond right away, I do apologize. It might be because I'm talking about a segment and it's easier for me to just cut that out <laughs> that way. Because um, tomorrow morning, usually in the morning and stuff, I, I do the edits of the flight school either that or Sundays and it takes a while to find where the, the, the parts are so I, I try to time all of those things uh, while I talk about it so I can make the YouTube video which is just a small compilation but to try and draw you guys into the, the channel here and everything else this is a captain as we again no welcome to the thank so you for following the turbulence and get him. then get him. explode The joystick map is covering the HUD. Oh, all right. Let me fix that. Thank you. I have a joystick hat now. There it is. It's a hat now. I didn't realize it covered up the HUD so much, so thank you for letting me know. Because the way the layout is over on this side of my screen, it's really, really hard for me to see my OBS. If I had three monitors, I could do it a lot better, but I don't yet, so. Alright, now you should see it, and you should see it not cover up the HUD so much. So let's get back to Star Citizen. Readjust that to center. Alright, we're going to talk about these all over again. Now you can see the HUD. Now my joystick thing doesn't cover it up. Alright, so first you have F1, your overview. This is the general one you want to keep it on while you're flying. Uh, this gives you an overview of your ship's condition, your thrusters, your shields, your weapons, your power management. All of those things are on the overview in a quick layout. You'll see that over on the left side. Then you go to F2, which is your weapons. This is the more direct control of the weapons, but you still have a bit of an overview. F3 gives you power management. So it shows the power setup of all of the different items below. Um, basically everything's turned on. You can turn things on and off and you can more directly control where your power is going. Why does it keep doing that? All right, let's do this again. <laughs> and take three for Grockies. Take three. Hey, Aslagan. All right, is everything looking good now, guys? D does it look pretty pretty? How's it looking now? Do, do I have a thumbs up? <laughs> oh my God. This is why actors even have multiple takes. Jeez. This is a captain. We have a little problem Spark with our... Spark Marky, so welcome to Thank slide. you for following. Turbulence Next the beard tingle. Explode. Chat, go get him. Okay, so, as I said, we want to talk about ship management systems. Now, ship management broken down into four tabs right now. However this is going to expand as the game expands so 
what's going to happen is getting used to these early systems. We're going to readjust where we are so you can see it. Make sure you keep seeing it. Getting used to this early on is going to help you out in the long run because you're going to be doing a lot more manipulating of these systems in the Persistent Universe too. So th these are definitely something you want to learn, at least in their basic form. Um, F1, you've got your ship overview. So yes, you see the overview right there and you've got the breakdown just over there on the left side. Top is your ship condition. It's all green for me because I haven't taken damage. And my shields, four quadrants, all of them up and running. I've got powers balanced to G1, G2, and G3. I'll get into those power sections in a bit. Um, they're evenly balanced, so 33%, 0.3 repeating essentially. God, it sounds like a Leroy Jenkins joke. <laughs> but yes, it's a power balance between all of them. You have your weapons below that with your missiles as well, if you have missiles. F2, so that's the F1 tab. F2 brings up weapons. Uh, it still gives you an overview of your ship at the top. However, you can actually break it down into all the weapons below. Now, I'll get into manipulating these in a moment. Just want to show you the tabs first. F3 is the power management. This is more direct power management of the ship. This is where I was talking about how the power is broken out into the three sections. You see G1, G2, and G3. I'll go over those in a minute when I start to manipulate them, but this is the power layout over there. All of the individual components that you can manipulate the power on right now are shown. The dots are essentially your power. It's, it's not a complete system yet. They're still working on some of this stuff. So this just gets you used to the general practice. F4 is your shield system. So for me, it's front, back, left, and right. Some ships only have front and back. Um, some will actually take that T and B. You can kind of faintly see it there. I'll move a little bit so you can see it slightly better. T and B is top and bottom, so six quadrant shields. That sort of thing is going to happen a little bit more. So th that's something you want to definitely start, you know, getting used to being able to manipulate. Now, for me, I like to use his voice attack, as I was saying before. It makes it a lot faster if I'm in the middle of flying, but, you know, it, it's still something you can easily do with mouse and keyboard, because voice and, you know, voice attack, that's what it calls to, is your keyboard. So, we're going to go to weapons first. Now, with the weapon system, you'll see all of a sudden I have a highlight. That's because I hit the home key on my keyboard. That lets me actually manipulate my weapons groupings. I can set these up to different fire groups how I want. So if you have, now if you die in combat, it resets them back to default. Last time I did it. Um, so you might have to have a, a prompt or be really, really fast at doing. But if you have all of the same type of weapon and you don't want to have to worry about two different buttons and you just want to go all out with a different setup, home lets you use the arrow keys which then can manipulate this. Then if you press enter, do you see how those became highlighted? That changes my main fire group. So I'm gonna show you what happens. Enter, home to turn it off. I've got control of my ship again. That's my type one fire group. You'll see the button lighting up just above my head for my trigger. Now, if I do this, I'll turn it off again. Fire group 2. You can see that button lighting up. Now if I turn them on again and hit home, I don't have to hit that second trigger button. There it is. That's what it lets you manipulate. I could set up a third fire group if I want. So as you get more weapons, you can actually go up to six guns on the Hornet. You can split them out into different groups that you like. So you can change where, you know, you could turn these off for group two and then turn those off, turn them on up here. So now you've got them switched. So now instead, I wasn't paying attention to which guns I was turning on and off. But yeah, you could even mix and match any way you like. So that would be my M4 zone number two. It's kind of hard to see the icons right now. They switch on me, but um, I think I got them. Yep, 
So now I switched them around. I'm controlling different guns. So you can you can play around with those different setups. You can also change these around. Actually, not even sure what that does exactly. I haven't played with that too much. I think that's an all eight lock, if I remember correctly. I just don't know how to undo it, because some of it still doesn't quite lock on right. Come on. Huh, that's um, not actually backing down like it used to. I used to be able to bump that back down by pressing down or left. <laughs> oh my. But yeah, you can change your lock-ons. So that that's those changes, essentially, on the weapon screen. F3, your power selections. Now, this gets into the different power managements. Again, pressing home, you can manipulate. You could hear that, hopefully. Propulsion offline. Shields offline. Shields on. So you can turn off individual weapons, different controls for them. That actually, if you're watching, you can't really see it. You can see it a little behind me right here. IR, but also on the EM emission over there. Um, yeah, that that is being controlled by me turning on and off power. That's actually going to come into handy a lot more in the Persistent Universe. There's also quick keys for it, so if I press home just so I have them. Four. The number four on your, or your keypad. That's your weapon system. Five. There's your shields. Six. Your engines, your propulsion. And you'll see a little bar spike happen on IR from me turning off my engines. So that's actually going to affect being able to stealth in the Persistent Universe and so forth. Now, 1, 2, and 3, same as 4, 5, and 6, shut things down completely. Watch the bars over to my left, G1, G2, and G3. If I press 1, it moves it towards G1. 2, G2, 3 is G3. Now, trying to rebalance it just by tapping those keys, you can get it kind of close with 1, 2, and 3, but you can also do this. Home key, enter, and now you have control. You can also, I've seen it done with a mouse, I've just never gotten it to work for it. Let me see if I can do it with the mouse. There it is. If you bring the mouse over when you're in this window, you can actually drag. So if you're mouse and keyboard, you, get, you can just drag your power settings around. Uh, if you have voice attack, it's going to use them a little bit differently. So, now to explain what these different things mean, because that's extremely important. G1 is your weapon system, so that means putting more power into weapons. So now that I've flipped that power over, you can see the weapons here very openly. See the power drain? That's actually going to put more power into recycling those weapons so that they don't run out as quickly. And they recharge just a little bit faster. That'll give you... it won't be a huge difference now. I just cycled, as you see, to G2. See, the difference isn't major. It's just enough to give you an extra couple of shots right now. It isn't a huge huge difference but now I let go you can see the recharge rate is just slightly different there's just a little bit of difference in it um, they're gonna be doing more and more with those power management systems G2 where I just put it that is actually putting power into my shields so that'll change the recharge rates of the shields it doesn't change your shield HP at the moment because there's no overclocking and stuff but it can change the amount of power available to it for recharging and other systems and then number three g3 that's your propulsion systems your thrusters your engine it gets you your boost back quicker so if you can see the fuel quantity i'm not sure if you can on the screen you should be able to from the last one i do hope but that's actually going to change your boost rate recharge Again, these aren't huge This is changes. the captain. We have a little problem with our Canyon engine sequence, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. Get up. 
So, yes, again, the, these aren't going to be major, major changes. They, they aren't going to be, oh my god, I have 500% increase. No. It's going to be a boost. It's just not amazing. However, those little bits can be the difference between you lost your shield and then just took a full shot to the cockpit, and, okay, I kept my shield up for a half second longer so I was able to turn away and get around in an asteroid. Or I could change my propulsion and get that boost back just in time to make that maneuver. Or I got just a little bit more shot behind my weapon, a little bit more power available to keep the shots on just long enough to get that kill. So it's all about fine-tuning, about those, those little managements. And again, with the fine-tuning, we have shields. You'll notice the four quadrants on my shields up there. Now, these are actually controlled by your numpad. Um, yes, this, this is a numpad control. Now, you can rebind all of these different things, but I use numpad with voice attack. Uh, I'll show you my voice attack commands in a moment. But the numpad, eight, forward. Notice the picture. You can see that all the other three quadrants reduced because everything was thrown into that forward shield. That forward shield just got a huge boost, so if you're going head-on against someone and you're just going to really try for it and they're not getting above you and they're, they're just doing a straight joust you can just throw everything into that front shield and if they're an equal player that doesn't understand these managements you've got the advantage now even guns even players one using a, a boosted forward shield one not that extra forward shielding is going to help you five resets six to the right or starboard left port reset and rear. So that way you can change all your shields on the fly. Now that's easier if you're mouse and keyboard than joystick. With joystick, that's why I use my voice attack. Again, I'll give you an example. Shields forward. Take them head on. That's Ella calling back to me. Take them head on tells me my shields forward actually happened. I can see it happen live that way because I'm on this tab. But even if I'm not on this tab, I know that the command happened. Balance shields. Reset shields. What is the command? I haven't used L in a while because it drains a lot of CPU. Sometimes I do have to look up her commands. I'm pretty sure it was balance shields. Yeah, it is balance shields. Why didn't she respond? Ella also doesn't always like to respond, and this is again why you have a voice callback. Because if you're not on that tab... Balance shields. Shields balanced. There By taking them away from you, I will take the death if it takes you to. She's snarky. But, again, that way I know the shields got balanced. When I called it and there was no response, if you don't have a response programmed in your voice attack, you don't know if it happened. Shield starboard. I guess starboard slide is better than you running away. Balance shields. Shields balanced. By taking them away from you, I will take the death if it takes you to. And you get the idea. I can do that while I'm doing this. So if I'm on this tab, now you can see it a lot better now. Before there were some bugs, which is why you really wanted to call back before. But say I'm getting shot at at the rear and I'm also trying to flee. And you want to manipulate these things. Here's where voice attack comes in handy. Oh no, I just got hit, bad. Power to engines. Power to engines. You had better be trying to get to more targets quickly. Shields rear. Stop running, you coward. So, I just slammed that asteroid, I split myself off, see how my tail's missing. That simulates to me, you know, I was getting shot in the rear. So basically, I just put all my power to the engines, took a big hit, so I could flee, and I also threw my shields to the rear. Now, if I know he has a beat on me, say I'm a little bit more open space, I'm trying to get to the next spot and everything else, I've, I'm at full speed, I don't need the boost right now, power to shields. Why do you try to avoid death? Do you not care about what I want? And there it is, I have that extra couple of seconds while I'm out flying. Oh no, I just got hit again. Power to engines. Power to engines. 
You had better be trying to get to more targets quickly. I want my boost back because my boost has gotten really, really low. Now, oh look, I actually have some guns left. Say he hit another object behind me and everything else, and I'm getting ready to fight. And I know that he's behind me, so... Alright, let's say he chased me through here. This is a captain. We have a... Me, 137. So we may experience some slight... Welcome to the Huggers. Thank explode. you for following. Makes the beard tingle. So, say I, I'm getting chased, but... You know, I come up on these asteroids. And... I lived a little bit longer because of those rear shields and everything, and I want to take a shot at him. Decoupling, which we've talked about before. Flipping around. Shields forward. Take them head on. Power to weapons. Perfect. Destroy Now my guns all. are ready. My shields are forward. He is spinning out. And I've got the shot. So all of that I can control with voice attack or you could do with... This is a captain. We have a... 10,000 to 1. So we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. explode. So that gives you those fine controls. So now your your shields have been switched over. You could also do that with the eight key, the five key, two, whatever you're most comfortable with. Me, I like voice attack because of the quick response while trying to use a joystick. That helps. It helps a lot. Um, it's a very very good secondary tool to have. And this is a captain. Real we have no a, a problem with our entry sequence, Welcome so we may experience some Thank slight turbulence and then tingle. explode. Get him. So, it does cost, it, there is a cost associated with it. It is not a free tool. Um, you'll have to check out the voice attack site for it. But, as I said, you can manipulate all these things through the keyboard, through rebinding your controls. They are all available in the control scheme. You can set this stuff up. So, it's just the idea of getting used to what works best for you to manipulate these things as quickly as possible. You want to be able to change your controls as quickly as possible for combat situations. Now, similar things where this will come into play, managing your power, managing your situation, managing your shields, the developers have already said these mechanics are going to be utilized in other areas, in scanning, in mining, in exploration, in running sensors. These types of systems are going to be broken down into different screens. They're going to be different. There might be mini games built within them. But again, the basic idea of getting used to using them while you're performing other actions is the mindset. That's what I talked about in the first episode. Getting yourself in the mindset of getting used to how the game mechanics work so you can build on that knowledge, so you can stack it on a lot quicker, a lot easier, as new things are released, both in the alpha and when they actually do changes in the final game um the game is always going to be evolving they might add entire different gameplay mechanics game schemas to the entire thing new professions or whatever you want to call them specializations uh, those could be added by the development team at any point so you want to be in that mindset of using these mechanics so that you always have that leg up that you are in the process of you know already learning how to utilize what they're giving you to learn the next thing in line. So now I will give a live lesson on that. And we'll go fight against some Vanduul. So I'm going to go back to the hangar. Oh, you got to head out, Azle, again? Thanks for stopping in. Alareth, we're going to use the Vanduul. No, because a defensive target isn't going to show a lot of... Uh, what would a defensive target show when it comes to shield manipulation? This is a captain. We have a Nemo no problem with Rethus. our entry sequence, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. Welcome to the Huggers. Thank you for following. Makes the beard tingle. Get him. How do you decouple? Uh, Jacob, it's a bind that you can set. For me, you can see it 
right now it should be flashing on the joystick on screen in my middle HUD section. Um, I believe it's middle HUD section. It's one of the HUDs. You'll see it going down. I have it bound to that key. Uh, it, it's a bind control. So I'm not sure what the default is for joysticks or mouse and keyboard just because I've I don't use mouse and keyboard that often, and I've rebounded to this for so long that this is just what I know decouple as. But if you look it up in the control sections, it'll show you how to decouple. when someone turns tail and runs the vend will do that quite often alrath and what you do when someone turns tail and runs isn't really part of the control setup that's not part of surviving with shielding and weapons as much the vend will show that off pretty well uh, someone turning tail and runs would have been more like last episode with the aiming which we did get a situation where it, sh it showed someone flat flying and I talked about never fly flat. Never, ever fly flat. If you fly flat, you're a dead target. People will take advantage of someone flying flat. They'll get above you. They'll see a big, wide cross-section. Just spray the crap out of it. Oh, Microhex has himself one. We all have one now. More and more of us are getting them. It is spreading pleasantly. Yeah, Lareth, they do run. They make maneuvers and, and get the hell away from a fight a lot of times. No, I, I, I've had them tail, turn tail and run. Well, yeah, it's a withdraw to attack. But that's a much better situation when you want to show off what's going on with your shield management and everything else because you constantly want to be in that cycle of fighting and switching things out to show it live. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true, Micro. It's probably very, very true. And we'll leave the, the joystick stuff above my head for the moment. So we're going to show a live thing. We're, we're going to get into some co-op Vandal Swarm. Caps Lock is the default? Okay. I could have just looked it up, I bet. But The biggest thing I always say with decoupling and any other controls is use the buttons that feel most comfortable and most natural for you. I never like to say where a control is specifically, especially in these videos. I like to talk in general terms because I like to encourage people to customize controls to what feels the best. Like, even when I was learning keyboard and mouse, I changed roll off of A and D and I turned those into my strafe. And I put roll on Q and E. Like, almost right away. A and D did not feel like roll. They, those felt like they should be strafe to me, so I put them there almost right away. So I could say, oh yeah, roll is on A and D. Well, it might not be for everyone. So, where the keys are, go into the control setup and use what feels really comfortable to you. <laughs> 